Today I have another easy but difficult project. And I say easy and difficult at the same time, because you have all the files that you need ready to download below this video, so you only have to set up your device. But if you want to make your own code from the beginning, this might be a little bit tricky. But I will try to explain the best that I can how this works. I want to say thank you to Kevin Dara YouTube channel for teaching me so much about ESP8266. I've learned how to do this with the help of his videos, and I was able to make my own code and use the ESP8266 connection, so now I want to pass that knowledge to you guys. So let's see what this setup will do. Here I have the Arduino Mega connected to an ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. Now here I have my smartphone with internet connection. I enter my webpage and now I have this control setup. I could control boolean indicators, send numeric values up to 32,000, I can send text or I could receive values as boolean indicators or numeric values once again. So look, when I press the third button for example, the third LED connected to my Arduino turns on. But have in mind that this is not made with a local connection between my smartphone Wi-Fi and the ESP8266. This is made via internet, and the data will be saved to the database of my website, so we could control this from anywhere in the world if you have an internet connection. Look, now I disable my Wi-Fi connection of my smartphone. So now I'm using the 4G data with my mobile service. But I'm still able to control the LEDs, so imagine creating a setup in your home and be able to control that from anywhere in the world. Instead of the LEDs, you could connect some relays and be able to control those from anywhere. The possibilities for this are infinite with an IoT system. But at the same time we could receive data. So for example if I have a gas sensor connected to my Arduino, I can see that value on my website, in case that we detect gas. But you could add any other kind of sensor, which can be a light sensor, temperature, humidity, movement and so on, and be able to see those values from anywhere, so a security system for your home sounds interesting. Ok guys, so let's see how to make this what will the code do and what we need to create our IoT system. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And also a huge thank you to all my patrons. So let's get started. The PCB Prototype Enterprise GLC PCB is sponsoring this video. Get PCBs up to 6 layer for very low prices, and also with fast delivery time. You can also order the SMT stencil for SMT soldering, and soon we will also have the SMT assembly service as well. Upload your design and easily get 5 PCBs of any color for only $2. What's up my friends, welcome back. First, let's see what this setup could do. The first part for this is boolean control, so turn on and off switches. On my table, I have 5 LEDs connected to the Arduino. If I enable any of these on my website, the ESP will get the data from the internet and turn on the LEDs. But if you know how to program Arduino, you could connect this signal not to just LEDs. You could control relays, alarms, enable any other module connected to the Arduino and so on. So imagine the possibilities. As an example, one idea of mine is to connect the ESP setup to the intercom button that opens the main door of my building. In this way I don't need a key anymore, just press a button on my smartphone and the door will open. Ok, so the next part is to control analog values, with numbers from negative 32,000 up to 32,000, because we are using integer values of 16 bits. Now I have the LEDs connected to some PWM pins of the Arduino. I set the control number 1 to 10. So as you can see, the first LED is now a little bit bright. At the same time, I'm also printing the value onto the LCD so we could better see the results. Now I set that value to 255 and the LED has maximum brightness. Now I set it back to 0 and the LED will turn off. Once again, you could use these numbers to do any other process that you want. Increase the values for a temperature control, send the data to a display, change the speed of a fan and so on. Ok guys, so the third control line on my website is for text input. You could place here any text up to 100 characters and send it to the database. The ESP will grab that data and then you could do whatever you want with it. As for example, I type hello world and I press send. I now get that text on my LCD and this is coming from the database. Pretty cool, right? 
Ok, so finally we have two more lines for receive data from the Arduino. We could receive three boolean values and four analog values. Look, now I have three switches connected to the Arduino. All switches are turned off, so the labels on my website are all inactive. But now I turn on switch 2. After some time I can see that the second indicator is now green and active. But instead of switches you could also connect some sensors with digital outputs and send that to the internet and be able to see the sensor values on your website. The last part is the same but with analog values. I now have some potentiometers connected to the analog inputs of the Arduino. Right now all these inputs are set to zero. But now I increase the first potentiometer and after some time the new data will be displayed on my website. So if you know a little bit of PHP coding, you could set an email each time that the values are over a certain limit. Imagine that you have a gas or a fire sensor. And now the output is above 800, which means that gas was detected. You want the website to send an email to you and inform you about that, right? Anyway, imagine all that you could do once you have the data on the database and you are able to grab that with the ESP. So now let's make this. We need two parts. The part that goes to the website, that is PHP code, and the part for the Arduino. I will use an Arduino Mega. It works with the Arduino Uno as well, but the code is too big, and I had stability problems. You need an ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. You need to create a website and a hosting service, where you'll have the PHP files. But don't worry, there are a lot of free hosting services as well. This is how the setup will go. In PHP, you could send a link that already has the values that you need to send. First, we have to send our web page, in this case, electronloops.com. Then we send the directory, which is the folder where you have the files. Then you have to send the name of the PHP file that will update the database, and then you add the values. So, for example, if I send this link and I add the question mark and the sensor equal to 33, in PHP we could detect the sensor word and grab the 33 value and then update the table with that value. In the same way, using PHP we could echo stuff. For example, if I write echo hello world in an empty PHP file, each time that I refresh that website I will get the hello world on my screen. But instead of that, we could echo something like this, for example, double slash 33 and the ESP module will receive that line and store it. So all we have to do is to detect the double slash sign and store the value just after that, which in this case is 33. So pretty much that's how we send the data and receive it from the server. Please read all the codes line by line in order to understand more, and do that for the Arduino code but also for the PHP files. Ok guys, so below you can download a zip file. Inside of that file you will have an Arduino code and another folder called Nubix. You have to upload the Arduino code to the Arduino Mega, and then you have to paste the Nubix folder to the website directory. So make these connections between the Arduino and the ESP8266 module. Make sure that you use the 33 volt supply. Ok, now let's get a free hosting page and a website domain. For that I usually use the 000webhost.com. So go to that link and click free sign up. Now here you have to enter your valid email address and create a new password and then click the sign up button. Now you'll get the message that a confirmation mail was sent to you, so check your mail inbox. So open that mail, click the confirmation link and confirm your email address. Once you are verified, click the get start button. You can skip the first two questions. But then when you are asked to create a new website, enter your website name, in my case I want to call it Nubix. You can use any other name that you want. Also create a password and click next. On the next page you have to select that you want to upload an existing website. Now this is our directory of the website that we have just made, so we have to upload the files from the Nubix folder right here. But first we need to change a few things in the PHP files, because you have to add your own data from your new website. So first we open the database connect PHP file. I'm using Dreamweaver, but you could use any other PHP notepad software, as for example notepad++. In this file you have to add the server, the username, the password and the database of your website, but for that we have to go back to the 000 web host. You have to log in with the used mail and password before. Now you have to select the created website, in my case is Nubix, and click manage site. Now you have to go to tools and select the database manager, and let's create a new database. 
click New Database. Give a name, a username and a password. Mine will be ESP8266, Noob1 as a username and my password. Now you have to click Manage and select PHP My Admin. That will open a new page and now you have to create a new table in order to store our data. But don't worry, you also have that in the downloaded zip file. So for that you first have to select the database. Now go and select Import. Click Select File and go to the Nubix folder you have just downloaded and select the ESP Table 2 file. Click Continue and the new table will be inserted. Now if you click this table, you can see that we have all the values for our website. The ID, the password and the send numbers and so on. Ok, so now we have to copy the database information and place the names on the PHP file before. The server in this case is localhost, the user will be this one, the database is this one and use the password that you have. Ok, so now you could upload these 4 files to your website. For that you have to go to 000 webhost and click file manager. Now click upload files. Click the upload button and select the 4 PHP files. Now if you go to your website settings, in general and copy your website link, you should have the same tables that I do on my website and you could change the data. Ok, so finally go back to the PHP My Admin page and change your ID and password if you want. This must have a maximum of 5 characters. I click change and in the ID tab I add 5 nines and the password will be 12345 as an example. This must be only numerical values. Now click continue and it's time to see the Arduino code. When you open this code you will see a lot of separated Eno files. Open the main ESP8266 file. First you will have the variables that you need to change. You have to add your Wi-Fi name and the password of your internet router. Then you must add your host. In this example that will be nubix.000webhost.com and in your case this will be the name you selected. Now you have to add the ID that you have used for the database. For my example that is 5 nines and the password of 12345. Read the comments for more details. Now you have to go to the ESP connection file and you have to place your domain here as well. In my case is this one and remember to add the triple W in this case. Upload the code to the Arduino Mega, connect the ESP, the LEDs and the potentiometer as in the schematic and test if it works. Now you should be able to turn on the LEDs and get the sensor data. In the code these are all the data that you can use. The received boolean values, the sent boolean values, the numbers and so on. Please read all the comments in the code because this is a very long code. So this is how you could make your own internet of things setup and control stuff from anywhere in the world just with a push of a button. If you need more information read all the comments or ask a question below. You have the schematic and the zip file below ready to download. In that zip file once again you will find the PHP files and the Arduino code. You also have another Arduino code that will be for an Arduino Uno but this will send and receive only one number, otherwise the code is too long and we will get stability problems. If you like this video and you have learned something new, click the like button and subscribe. And also consider supporting me on Patreon. So thanks again and see you later guys.